dans cette découverte, qui ne sont pas une découverte pour tout le monde, mais pour moi totalement. Regardez, une minute de jeu uniquement sur vos Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Plus, plus, Turbo Edition. Bon, bah, du coup, on va commencer. C'est bon, vous avez fini de regarder mes jeux sur le côté mmh, C'est parti. Un jeu qui est sorti il y a longtemps, mais l'édition Ultra Deluxe elle-même est relativement récente. Il y a eu un temps de battement de quoi Deux ans entre le jeu normal et la sortie de l'Ultra Deluxe. D'ailleurs, les développeurs aiment bien troller. Donc, euh, ils n'arrêtaient pas de passer des, euh, des messages en mode « Oui, oui, t'inquiète, ça arrive. » Alors, français, voilà, pour les textes et les sous-titres. Ce qui veut dire que le jeu de base est en anglais au niveau de l'audio. Avez-vous déjà joué à Stanley Parable Non, pas du tout. Ni le normal, ni le luxe. Jusqu'à ce que l'ordinateur soit pas visible. Donc là, ouais, il est à peine visible. L'heure actuelle, mais j'en ai aucune idée mon poteau. Tiens, on nous demande pas ça euh, souvent. Ah, PM, ok. Donc euh, oui, je voulais faire du 17h. Bah 17h, c'est 5pm. Euh, oui, 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 voilà. Voilà, donc découverte totale. Ah, pas de paramètres, on s'en fiche. The end is never, the end is never, the end. Hmm. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Ah Erreur, parce que... Voilà, commande. Alors, voilà, en avant... Bah, oui, W... Non. Merci. C'est programmé pour le QWERTY. Voilà, sauter espace, très bien. Et taille des sauts on va le mettre en grand pour ceux qui me suivent, qui ne parlent pas anglais. Ah, c'est quand même mieux Ok. Les clics de souris ne font rien. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Ah, le, le mug I hate Mondays. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Voilà, le mug qui a pété, un très bon goût. 
Number one dad. Bah, euh, y a, oui, voilà, il y a forcément quelqu'un qui a la, la mug number one dad. Donc, salle de réunion, a priori. En tout cas, c'est ce que fait Stanley. Alors, là, un peu le principe, j'ai l'impression, c'est est-ce qu'on vit ce qu'on nous narre Et coucou Ezekiel. Oui, et tu as bien raison. Et tu dis, attends, excusez-moi, une petite seconde. Tuc. Complètement oublié. On va changer le titre parce que oui, je suis en train de faire ça sur Twitch. Donc, à quel moment est-ce qu'on devient dissident euh, dans le jeu Pour le moment, il nous dit d'aller dans la salle de réunion. Est-ce qu'on veut aller dans la salle de réunion Ou est-ce qu'on veut commencer à faire n'importe quoi Il n'y a pas de zoom, j'aurais bien aimé voir sur quoi il bossait. C'est pas une information cruciale, mais c'est pas grave. Ah voilà, les mugs qui commencent à se répéter. Hop. Be my valentine. Ah, la salle de la photocopieuse, normal. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Ok, alors ils ont décidé de nous poser clairement en mode. Voilà. Il a décidé d'entrer par la porte de gauche. Il nous dit le narrateur. Est-ce qu'on va suivre la narration ou est-ce qu'on est dissident dès maintenant Ouais, oh, porte gauche, c'est pas grave. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Si je me mets en face du projo, ah non, je peux pas me mettre en face. Hmm. Hmm. Tout le monde est unique, surtout vous. Je veux voir ce qui, ce qui bosse. Euh, réunion euh, motivationnelle, là, apparemment, euh, type euh, RH. Euh, nombre de slides sur ce slide. Chart, slide, chart and slide. J'aime beaucoup leur humour. Hum. <rire> Taux d'accroissement du nombre de euh, graphiques par euh, slide. Ok. Heureusement, ils vont aller un petit peu trop vite pour les liens. Plutôt bien vu par rapport à la vie en entreprise, on va dire. What do people want things? Happy feeling et rayé, il y a marqué James, you are fired. Ok. Money, more money. <rire> voilà, c'était une réunion euh, brainstorming. Voilà, we have our new product. Que veulent les gens des graphiques à propos des choses et de l'argent Voilà, liste des choses à faire. Alors, le, le début, c'est que du faux jargon qui sert à rien. Du genre... Euh, Expéditeur, je sais pas ce que c'est, mais synergie des valeurs intrinsèques de jeu, quelque chose. Euh, voilà, changement de paradigme du marché global. 
En dernier, j'aime bien lire Audi. Monétiser le free to play. Allez, donc. La salle du patron. Le bureau du patron. Qui est upstairs. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Bon bah c'est le moment où on commence à être dissident. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, Why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, Why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? 
and everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Ok, de retour au point de départ. Bon, on a pris une décision dissidente, on l'a payé de notre vie. Moi je dis, euh, continuons à décider. Hein. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. On va prendre la porte de droite. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Hmm. Ouais, pourquoi pas. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now, in order to get back, he needed to go um uh from here. It's um left. Pas trop le choix. Oh no, no, it's to the right. My mistake. No, 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 not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly... Oh dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? Now, let's see. We went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yep, okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely this way. J'y crois moyen. Il fallait remonter pour reprendre le chemin. No, 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 no. This isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. 
Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to, um, oh, who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about, rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay, from the top. Ah. Donc on a vu la fin, apparemment. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley... Wait. Wait, what? No, I... No, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over. Completely fresh. Everything should be... Oh, did something change? Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere or... A... Hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay, then. It's an adventure. Come, Stanley. Let's find the story. La porte se ferme pas derrière. I'll say it. This is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. Do we just... Do we need to restart the game again? Well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again. But it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Eh ben, pas mieux. Okay, yep, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? Aha! I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. What? No, wait, never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. Now this... Well, I'll be honest, I don't recognize this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It... is that correct? Hmm. Do you remember, Stanley? Well, do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! Congratulations! I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off, so good job. Oh, no. No, I don't feel right about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. All right, I've got a solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple is that? Si je me regarde un tout petit peu. Ok. Ah. 
Euh... Alors oui, mais l'histoire, elle était là-bas. Ah, toujours pas de porte ici. Bah du coup, je me demande ce qui se serait passé si j'avais no, suivi... No, si si j'avais suivi les instructions euh, telles que prévues dès la première fois. Ça aurait pu être une façon de faire. C'est euh, la première fois, tout faire, tout comme on nous dit, et après commencer à faire n'importe quoi. You see, the line knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Though, here's a thought. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there? Or to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? Simply by the act of moving forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Okay, Stanley, I need to follow this train of thought for a minute. Just stick with me. Now, we can both agree that the nature of existence is in fact a byproduct of one subjective experience of that existence, right? Okay, now if my experience of your existence rests inside of your subjective experience of this office, is this office in fact the skeleton of my own relative experiential mental subjective construct? Whoa, 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 hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. the music, go back and look at that fern. Stanley, this fern will be very important later in the story. Make sure you study it closely and remember it carefully. You won't want to miss anything. Wait, what? We're back at the office? No, no, no. Line... You do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? Oui, effectivement, on était rentré par là. Et on revient par là. Et évidemment, cette partie-là de la ligne n'existait pas au moment où on est passé. Ah Tant qu'on va redémarrer. Oh no 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 not again, Line. How could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through, you. No, oh, I can't take this anymore. To hell with it. Restart. You know what, Stanley? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, daring, mysterious. Oh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in, well, I don't know. How about this direction? Now, 
Yes, this is exciting. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? Go wild. Use your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley, I'm ready for it. J'aime énormément le coup du couloir qui tourne euh, genre 5 fois de suite à gauche. Enfin à droite dans ce sens là. Oh no, not you again. Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it and we should be fine. Ah, a choice. We get to make a decision. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay, so I know that each door has to lead somewhere, which means that somewhere at the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door that leads here. And that in turn means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? And since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. Come, Stanley. Our destiny awaits. Hum... Ouais, mais du coup, j'ai pas le choix. Il est complètement bidon, son raisonnement. Oh, hold up, what's this? Hmm. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me... That's what this is? It's all one giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game... Eight... Eight times? That's really how all this goes? It's all determined. So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this... this... thing... wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really... No, it can't be. I... I don't want it to be. I... I don't want the game to keep restarting. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't restart the game. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. And the time return stopped? Does that mean, um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The, um, whatever it is that made this schedule? How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? So, okay. I guess now we just wait. You know, I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story. Wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. So I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime, if you... Je sais pas si vous avez remarqué les deux portes menées à la même pièce de toute façon, les deux qu'on a prises. Hmm, ok. Donc là, si ce qu'on a vu sur le tableau est correct, ça signifie que le narrateur a oublié qu'on avait déjà démarré plusieurs fois. Donc on va vraiment repartir sur l'histoire d'origine, a priori. Par contre, la fin du huitième redémarrage, c'était Stan Lemmer. Je suis pas sûr. Tout j'ai déjà mort. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Est-ce qu'on fait les choses proprement cette fois? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Mm. 
Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Si je reprends l'escalier vers le bas, est-ce que je remeurs Et donc est-ce que ça nous relance dans une boucle de tout ce qu'on vient de faire Ou est-ce que c'est plus fin que ça Avec une seule façon de savoir. Ah non, 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 c'est vrai que ça durait trois plombes ici. Tant pis, allons voir en haut. Autant je suis curieux de savoir, autant si c'est pour ce. si c'est vraiment le cas que ça repart sur la même chose. Je veux pas que ça reparte sur trois plombes de dialogue en boucle. Mais c'est cossu ici, dis donc. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, Four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. On dirait le bureau de Monsieur Burns dans Les Simpsons. Ah, mes souvenirs des Simpsons ne remontent Stanley pas. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs, trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was two eight four five. Le narrateur c'est vraiment euh, voilà, c'est le centre du jeu. Il est excellent. 2 8 4 5. Ah bah deux secondes, je fais du tourisme. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in and the door just opened all by itself. And Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. <laughs> hmm. Ah, si on rentre le mauvais code, ils sont là. Ah, putain, mais qu'il est con, on lui a dit trois fois. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Voilà, je crois que cette image résume le jeu. Lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Ah, ici aussi des tests lundi. 
Now the monitors jump to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Alors, c'est donc Facility Power là où il faut aller pour couper les courants, je pense. Ok, les boutons font rien. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Um. But du coup, là, il est ni on ni off. Enfin, il est on. Needle awaiting input. Voilà, en attente euh, de données. Donc la machine est sur on. Bon, voici le narrateur. Ah. blackness, and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away! And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. 
and that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Peut faire demi-tour. Ah, oh, pas l'air. Hein. Euh, ça fait un peu euh, fausse sortie. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Ah bah c'était une fin. On a débloqué la fin. Mais évidemment, ça dormait ici. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paint. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Eh ben, le narrateur qui se vexe parce qu'on va trop vite. Ah. Alors, il y a deux possibilités qu'on n'a pas explorées le escape et le on va essayer le on si on nous laisse le faire Stanley walk straight ahead through the large door that read mind control facility The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, 
He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Alors, la question c'est est-ce qu'il y a une fin où on ne revient pas au point de départ But here was the proof, the heart of the operation, controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Or would he? Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going. What all this means, I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine, I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge, it's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't.
Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count, or don't. It's all the same to me, all a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. Ah. Il y a un changement. Donc c'était pas une impasse ce qu'on a fait. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. D'accord, il y a plein de papiers par terre, mais euh, en quoi ça change quoi que ce soit When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. On va se diriger vers l'escape et on va voir si quelque chose change d'ici là. Yet there was not a single person here either, feeling a wave of disbelief. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Si un moment faut redescendre, je sens que je suis pas prêt de le faire ça. Oh mais ça s'ouvre. Tableau intitulé Business Strategy. Ok. J'ai jamais essayé d'aller par là. Hein. On essaiera une autre fois, je vais aller euh, vers Escape. Ok, je pense que nous tous le savons maintenant. Bla bla bla, dark secrets, the keypad, Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh hey, look, it's a new passageway. Quelle surprise! Quelle Ouais, si ça se trouve, je ne sais pas, mais si ça se trouve, c'est un jeu qui n'a littéralement pas de fin. Stanley walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. On va tenter l'escape. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. 
Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Ah, on trouvé la planque des devs. Est-ce qu'on peut les voir mieux là? Alors, employee database. Ok, un gars qui fait un solitaire. Un écran de chargement. Alors. Et l'impeccable Kevin Brightning en tant que narrateur, je confirme, il est impeccable. Est-ce que c'est une façon de nous mettre un générique. Euh post mort parce que la narratrice nous a bien expliqué que oui on était mort est-ce que c'est juste le générique de fin cette euh, salle en fait parce que c'est plus utile que ça ou euh... On nous avait dit à un moment, j'y pense en voyant la plante, qu'il faudrait se souvenir de la fougère, qu'elle aurait une importance particulière à un moment. Peut-être se souvenir de ça. Comment ça, zone de guerre J'ai pas vu ça. Au début du développement, nous avons imaginé une fin où Stanley se retrouverait sur un champ de bataille contre des extraterrestres. Le jeu développerait sa propre intelligence et partirait en guerre contre le narrateur. Nous avons réalisé après que c'était poussé la blague trop loin. C'est peut-être trop plat par rapport au ton du jeu. Certains l'ont vu aussi comme une manière de nous moquer des amateurs de jeu de tir, ce qui n'était pas le but. Ouais, ça aurait été marrant ça. Une défunt, ça devient un FPS. Alors techniquement, on a déjà les contrôles du FPS, hein, donc il y, y a tout ce qu'il faut pour ça. La signification du nombre 112800. Hmm. Plein d'informations intéressantes là. intéressant cette petite visite ok le téléphone il fait rien il y a vraiment un musée d'art moderne là 
down, staircase, one option, two options. T'as marqué quoi là-haut J'aurais bien aimé voir le maintenance. Dommage qu'on puisse pas euh, zoomer. Confusion ending. Ah oui, confusion ending, on l'a eu. Levier de la fin relaxante. J'ai pas eu de fin relaxante. Ces leviers se trouvaient dans la fin relaxante. Le joueur devait actionner un levier. Le narrateur décrivait la couleur du levier choisi. Ah. La fin relaxante. C'est bien, j'apprends des choses sur les autres fins que j'ai pas encore faites. Euh, la fin relaxante a connu plusieurs itérations. Cette pièce est la quatrième version de la fin. Pensant l'avoir achevée, mais finalement nous l'avons abandonnée et modifiée juste avant la sortie. J'aime cette sensation dans le jeu où on n'a aucune idée de là où on est, de, dans le sens où... Euh, là, je sais pas si je suis entre, toujours au début du jeu ou en train de regarder le générique de fin, en fait. Mais du coup, c'est bien parce que euh, j'arrête de tracer. Première version de la salle du compte à rebours. Ouais, t'es très bien la salle du compte à rebours. La fin de la liberté telle qu'elle apparaissait dans la bêta. Ouais, la fin de la liberté. Ça c'est bon. Donc il y a la fin relaxante que j'ai pas trouvée. J'ai passé par là. Oui. On va continuer à monter. Là-bas, c'est deux... Euh... Voilà, exit par là. Je vais d'abord regarder ça, mais on a vu un endroit qui exit. J'ai envie d'en apprendre plus sur les fins que j'ai pas faites. Bureau de Stanley, de gauche à droite, l'évolution du bureau de Stanley au fil du temps. 2011, 2012, 2013, ok. Ouais. Oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... No, I don't quitterai pas le jeu. J'aime bien cette idée. Le côté... Euh... côté, Vous pouvez pas gagner, arrêtez de jouer au jeu. Appuyez sur échappe et quittez. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Ça, ça m'intéresse. New content. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? Hello, and thank you. 
thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Hmm. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... or oh, here we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if, um... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. All right, all right, let's see, it's the jump circle. Est-ce qu'on le fait Allez. C'est trop con. Nouveau contenu, l'édition de luxe. Et c'est tout. Et je pense que euh, ça change rien. Voilà, aucune récompense, rien, juste un compteur. Is is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Goodness, another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. <sighs> it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley Parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? Ha! Et voilà le nouveau contenu. Enfin, je pense. Psst. 
Stanley, come over here, in the vent. I want to show you something. Okay, let's go in the vent. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. I call it the Memory Zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. You see, Stanley, doesn't the Memory Zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. Alors, n'ayant moi-même pas connu le lancement de Stanley Parable, ça tombe un petit peu à plat leur façon de faire le truc là. Hmm. Well, because it happened. Oh, je me souviens de cet écran aussi. <rire> Alors ça c'est du troll de première qualité. Les, les devs qui mettent un, euh, un succès qui s'appelle inatteignable, il est impossible de débloquer ce succès. Alors ça c'est du succès aussi. Sort, euh, je, genre va jouer dehors quoi. Euh, ne pas jouer pendant 5 ans. Ça c'est un, un type de succès, ne pas jouer pendant 5 ans je... And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim, it was Persona 3, it was all of them, and now it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. quand même un petit peu éloigné de l'idée de départ. Oh, 
Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone to spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. What I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Hmm. Ou on va avoir un best of des critiques, ou un worst of en l'occurrence. Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. Tellement méta le, le dépotoir des reviews Steam. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, no, 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 for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley? I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the... Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumination and more of a treatise. Or maybe a manifesto. Look, I'll outline it for you very briefly and you can tell me what you think. Okay, so my theory is that any choice you've ever made is simply a series of choices made by the person who you are or were or will be at the time of having made said choice. 
That is to say, if by articulating a choice you've already made, you bring that choice into being, then by making no choice and saying nothing, are you not simply erecting in the sanctuary of time a monument to every person you've ever been, making every choice to which you've ever given your Greek gift of mortal and yet timeless thought? Or rather, do all of the choices you've ever made in fact make you more not this kind of person and in fact do the very opposite? You see, it could in fact be both of these things at once, that you are both making choices and not making choices, and that they are both affecting you and not affecting you at the same time, by virtue de nous faire of the fact that you both are and are not bouton. making them. Okay, at first, I was leaning towards manifesto, but now I'm going to circle around and slap the treatise label on this one. I think it has much more of a treatise vibe to it. But wouldn't you say that manifesto just has a much grander sort of thing? It's not like I'm going to stay here. 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 Well, there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go poof, and it's all over. Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie Nine will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating of their Steam review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. To be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on exactly how Steam works. Perhaps that would have been the smart thing to check on before I went about this whole. Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes? It's not unendurable by any... Stanley! Stanley! St Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 hours! You've just been frozen there! I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer, and my God, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times. And there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button. And if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here. And more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again. I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. I can't touch it. And I have to believe, I have to know that sooner or later, no matter how much I plead with you, you're going to press the button again. Why would you? I've been thinking and thinking, and I, I don't know what I can do to convince you otherwise. Oh, my God. Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. Oh, my goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I, I think it's been a week. Or well, two weeks? I've been sitting here all that time. Just sitting here, not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. That's what I'm realizing now, Stanley. I'm realizing that I needed to know that someone was listening. I needed there to be a vessel through which my words were moving. It was the vessel I needed, Stanley. Not the outcomes, not the story. None of that matters anymore. I'll give it all up. I'll give up every branching path. I'll burn my story to the ground. One single thing I need, and God, I can see now that I need it more than anything, is to know that someone else is taking it in. These words that I'm saying, I need to know you can hear me. Because maybe, Stanley, maybe, if you can hear me, then maybe it means I'm real. Maybe I'm not just a fiction. Was I scared of that all along? Perhaps, yes. Perhaps I've been scared this whole time. That if I stop speaking, I'll slip backwards into the silence and be consumed by it. I can't be taken by it, Stanley. I can't lose myself in the stretch of emptiness between you and me. When you press that button, you're still right there. But I know you're so tremendously far away. And in those moments, the emptiness folds itself outward in between the two of us. And I am suspended in its unyielding quietness. I can feel the edges of my reality curdling inward and decaying. I can tell that I am becoming less and less real. Yet to speak to you now, 
I am alive. I am truly and completely here. I am a being. I am someone. I am something. I am being listened to. I am being recognized. The emptiness between us has collapsed, and I feel right now like I am not a work of fiction. I feel as though I occupy space. Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days, months, I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I can only describe as the collapse of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. All of them collapsed down into a single instant. In that instant, I could see myself clearly, calmly, with a collected heart. It was an impossibly rich wellspring of both delight and disgust simultaneously. I was consumed by it. I could do nothing but wallow in it for what felt like an eternity, for what I now know was far less. You see, it was a revelation for me. It was unlike anything I had ever known. It was a space without consequence, without action or outcome. It was divorced entirely from the question of free will that you and I have squabbled over for so long. There could be no one ending, no singular outcome of events, not if all events existed in the same moment, and I felt freed. I felt unburdened by the need to manifest a particular outcome into being. I saw that I could allow myself to exist along all timelines, and that each of them was simply a strand in the web of my being. It was incredible. The spaciousness, the equanimity of the moment, both singular and infinite. For the longest time, this was my experience. And then, this moment passed, and the most unyielding fear I have ever known crept into my mind. And it is this sensation that I have been experiencing now for longer than I could have ever expected was possible. I have been waiting for you. Not that you might save me or do something to fix it, but merely to state for you the plain fact of this manner of existence. I wish you to feel afraid as I do, that perhaps one day this state of mind will consume you as well. Perhaps you will somehow, in some way, have to live as I do now, and I wish for you to know how excruciating it is, and for you to be in true terror of its eventual arrival. If I can only do this, only this one thing, perhaps it will bring me the smallest moment of peace in the darkness. Alors le truc c'est qu'il n'y a pas de porte. Hein. Donc à part spammer le bouton, je vois pas en quoi on peut faire avancer le chemin de blique. Donc la première fois qu'on a appuyé dessus, c'est passé quelques secondes, puis quelques minutes, puis quelques heures, puis on va dire quelques semaines, puis quelques années. Là, il a dû se passer des décennies ou des siècles, et donc on n'a plus de réponse. Est-ce que ça veut dire que le narrateur est mort Essayons de passer quelques millénaires. j'ai cassé. Oui, il y a un bip bip, je sais. Très bien, passons quelques dizaines de milliers d'années. 
But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs-down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then, he's talking too much, they said. First, he didn't entertain us. Now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. We get these demands that seek everything and are accountable to nothing. We get a world where someone will say, Oh, there should be a skip button. You should be able to freeze Stanley in place while the narrator sits there forever and ever. We want all of this in the new Stanley parable. We demand it. And then, because it was said, because it was spoken, now it simply has to happen. The most immediate desires, every single thing demanded by every person at every moment in time. If someone wants it, then it's a crime not to bring it into being. Oh, on peut plus appuyer. Et voilà. The end is never 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 the Ah bah c'est comment ça s'effondrer Je pouvoir sortir Non toujours pas Le narrateur est plus là. Ok, alors le principe a dû changer parce que là. Sa logique avait continué à chaque fois qu'on appuie sur le bouton, passerait des milliards d'années. Ah, le bouton marche encore ou... Ah Ton cas, c'est... Retour au bureau. Oui. Ouh. C'est parti loin là. Someone was following Stanley. He was sure of it. If he checked over his shoulder now, he would surely catch them. It was only a matter of time. New new content. On ira voir plus tard. 
When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow, yes, this room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken... But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Hmm. Ça essaye de nous prendre par les sentiments, là. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> gotcha! Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Sorry, but you're in my story now. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. <laughs> Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. Ouais, je voulais jouer pour... Bah, dans le sens où on a littéralement aucune autre possibilité pour le moment. But in his mind, ah... In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. 
Ça, c'est pour préparer le dîner, oui. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Je l'ai pas eu le game with a baby, moi. It was such a wonderful fantasy, and so in his head, he relived it again, and then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay, on va écouter un peu le narrateur. Il nous a demandé de pas appuyer sur le bouton. Tu vois le jeu. Faut que j'ai envie d'appuyer sur le bouton. Appuyer sur Q pour être au travail le matin, donc ça nous reset euh, si on appuie sur Q normalement. Non Ah. Alors là, là je marche. Est-ce que c'est à base de... Je me demande de pas le faire, mais euh, on n'a pas le choix dans le sens où sinon il s'écoule des heures et des heures. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? <rire> Veuillez appuyer sur T pour ne rien remettre en question. Bah, vous savez quoi? Je vais. Euh... Partons dans l'anarchie. Je vais appuyer sur A. Voilà, ce qui ne change rien. On va sortir. Attendons un petit peu. Je pense que là on n'a pas le choix. Le bruit de cette horloge. I suppose I can't, not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... Hmm. Already this was uncomfortable, and Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again in his life. Not bad. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. What? But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. 
Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Je vais retourner euh, à l'escalier en bas. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Ça va très probablement être la même chose. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief, Stanley felt, to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine.
I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Eh ben, je suis pas prêt de redescendre les escaliers. Que ça, je l'avais déjà vu. Ok, donc si je descends. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, good. You noticed my sign. <laughs> yes, I have something very exciting to show you. J'aime bien le good. You noticed my sign. C'est le truc à plein de néons qu'on peut absolument pas louper. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra-deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra-deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley parable 2. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience, built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. <rire> ah ce graphique En blanc Voilà les parties ennuyeuses du graphique En rouge Les parties cool du graphique Leurs affiches sont pas mal hein, Pour l'annonce d'un deux Ah alors elle, on sait toujours pas quel rôle elle joue, euh, la fougère. On sait juste à un moment, on nous a dit, elle aura un rôle à jouer. 
Ils aiment bien euh, l'expression paradigme shift. TSP, je sais pas ce que c'est TSP. <rire> la couleur rouge. Effectivement. Rouge en plus, c'est joli. Ça marche. Ah, des études de logo. Putain, mais ils ont déjà fait... Euh... Un truc pas dégueu. Hein. Alors, euh, celui-là au milieu, non, absolument pas. Non, je regarde parce que des formations professionnelles. Non, celui-là, absolument pas. Ça, c'est... Euh... Vous voyez le Resident Evil Village, où ils ont casé le 7 dans le mot village, ça marche, ça fonctionne. Mais là, là ça ne fonctionne pas du tout. Ça c'est techniquement, faire des logos, faire des noms, faire des trucs, c'est ce que j'ai fait au début de ma carrière professionnelle. Donc excusez-moi si je m'arrête un petit peu là-dessus, et que je vois qu'ils ont déjà fait du travail de type agence dessus. Alors ça c'est tout bête, effectivement, ce qui est sélectionné, mais c'est de loin le meilleur. Oh, c'est trop fin ça Je suis sûr qu'en plus c'est juste un dev qui l'a fait et pas une agence, c'est comme quoi c'est pas compliqué à faire. Très bien. TSP2 logo ideas. Bah oui, bah c'est celui-là le mieux, on est d'accord. Les affiches sont bien. Celle-là elle est pas mal. J'aime bien leur style minimaliste dans les affiches. Alors celle-là absolument pas. Là, du sens, elle est bien, les couleurs sont bien, tout est bien. Il y avait une que j'adorais. Ah, on peut pas ressortir. Bah alors Tant pis. Faire back to doors. Ok. Je, je pense qu'il y a un jeu de mots avec back doors. Mais bon, bref. Celle-là, elle est pas ouf. Celle-là non plus. Celle-là, ça passe. Ça, ça flatte l'intelligence du joueur. Le côté, euh, souvenez-vous, Stanley Parable, c'était pas un jeu pour les débiles. Ah, mais celui-là, il est parfait. Euh. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Voilà, cette affiche-là, elle est excellente. The end is never the end again. Vous allez pas rappeler tout. Voilà, tout est dit, il n'y a plus rien à dire derrière. Par contre, je n'ai pas la ref euh, au 47. Ah, c'est le numéro de notre bureau 427 Peut-être. Et voilà, s'il faut avoir la ref, euh, bon. Prequel. Ah, c'est marrant, ça me replonge euh, dans les agences de com où je suis passé. Ah, obscur. s'asseoir ou... Qu'est-ce que ce bus fout là Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Jim. 
Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you roleplay as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim, sleeping and waking as Jim, falling in love and being heartbroken as Jim, seizing all of the world's possibilities as Jim, and as Jim, watching your dreams crumble into dust. Do you feel it deeply? Are you really, truly Jim right now? If so, then please step forward and press the button. Jim. <laughs> yes, you see? What a thrill, what a rush. That was you. The button described you. Do it again, do it again. Jim. Ooh. It hits even harder the second time. If this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. Let's take a break from the gym button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. Jim. Oh, there, cowboy. Sometimes a person can be too much, Jim. I'm putting the gym button away. Otherwise, soon you'll start to lose all sense of who you Jim, actually Jim, are. Jim, Jim, Jim. I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable too. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. Ça a changé. Ah, ça c'est quoi An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it would go at the end of the um. Uh, well, we'll figure that out later. Paramètre champion du monde Qui ça veut dire Ça fait bizarre parce que comme le, le contenu additionnel a l'air très différent de l'idée de départ de ce qu'était The Stanley Parable, qui j'en juge à la différence entre euh, ce qu'il y a dans les pièces New Content et les, et les autres. Ça, ça fait un peu bizarre. Ok, je vais être honnête, je n'ai pas encore décidé sur ce one. Je pense que dans la nouvelle version, l'office pourrait utiliser un peu de décoration, comme des ballons. Mais je suis décidé sur Get Well Someday. And happy 12th birthday. Which would you go with? <laughs> Les deux sont tellement hors sujet, quoi. Euh, pour décorer un bureau, votre bureau, vous bossez dans un bureau. Vous prenez quoi comme ballon Le euh, Get Well uh, Someday, c'est euh, vas-y, bon rétablissement, voilà. Ou euh, bon, euh, bon 12e anniversaire, ma, euh, ma belle-fille. Les deux sont hors on est d'accord. You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Happy 12th birthday, step niece, it is. Or actually, maybe I should have gone with. No. No, I've made my decision, we're moving on. 
Come now, you've already made your choice. It's true that you chose badly, but we all have to move on from our mistakes. Ce troll. Allez, on va demander au débile et on va faire l'inverse. Hmm. Ouais, quand je vois les affiches qui sont là, celles qui vendent dans le magasin de produits variés, je crois qu'ils ont tout de suite compris hein, lesquelles étaient les meilleures euh, parmi celles qu'ils ont faites. Les autres, c'est pas la peine, franchement. Saut de réconfort. Le bouton qui dit le nom du joueur qui joue au jeu, on l'a fait. Correction de bureau, c'est fait. Un saut de réconfort. Qu'est-ce que c'est que ça Un peu bizarre cet endroit. Free new plus easy achievement. Ok, des succès faciles <rire> Donc un, euh, un levier, on tire le levier et ça nous donne un succès. On va voir. Now here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes, you see, you'll come to this lever and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as that. Ok, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. Lol. Ah, c'est un jeu qui s'en bat tellement les. Hein. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Collectibles. Ah, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. La musique est impeccable. Ah. <rire> J'aime bien le, le 5. C'est la carte. Ah, Aesthetics World Champion, c'était fermé. A reassurance bucket, oh, je l'ai pas vu non plus. Oh, Infinite Hall. Ça me rappelle une ex. Lol. Just keeps going. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is in fact a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right, infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium.
Euh... Peut-être envie de le faire en dernier lui. Ah, c'est fermé. Donc bah go, hein. on a qu'à sauter. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top and we can continue onward. Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective, the inf... Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece, then. Une dernière chose que je voulais voir, j'aime bien le côté euh, balade dans le hall des expositions, euh, c'est une atmosphère qu'on voit pas ailleurs. Infinito Office Decoration, je m'en fous. Là, moi ouais, c'est le B2 et le, euh, et le hashtag. Ah, la décoration de bureau, on l'a vu. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical, that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold onto the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, It's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, Can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Ah, 
Lol, on peut pas le poser. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. Bon bah on a un saut. C'était où le truc que je cherchais Là je crois. Là, apparemment je champion du monde, mais ça on l'a déjà... Ah attends Paramètres C'est un truc qui s'appelle champion du monde dans les paramètres. Non. Bon, bah lui on saura pas. On a gagné un saut Et j'aime bien la façon de y réfléchir la lumière, ça marche bien. Exit par là. Okay. Bah voilà, c'était le petit tour au parc des expos. C'est la même sensation qu'à chaque fois que je quitte un parc des expos, en mode... Euh... C'était pas inintéressant, mais... Je me sens pas oh grandi right. en tout cas du Yes, ready to move on now. So Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on. Let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes. Yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course, with respect, with care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? I suppose it could, but it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. Très bien. Eh bien, chers amis, on n'a jamais joué à The Stanley Parable 2. On ne savait même pas que ce jeu existait. Eh bien, essayons. This is the story of a man named Stanley. 
Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on. Ok, donc c'est la même chose avec des ballons. À un moment, il va y avoir le trou sans fin. Ah. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Je voulais voir si la corde a une texture. C'est juste du noir. Ah, vite peut-être. Stanley felt the bucket calling to him, begging him to pick it up. Why was he not doing it? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Ah, il y avait le seau derrière. Bon bah très bien, hein, pas besoin. He entered the door on his left. Mm, let's go. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. One of them, one of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these, only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. Eh, les miroirs dans les jeux vidéo, c'est pas ça. Y'a pas de retracing dans le jeu. On peut pas aller voir dans l'ascenseur. Ah, on peut pas y aller cette fois. Si on peut remonter un moment, on ira voir. Here's the door, just go. Just go. Another miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Or um, what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under your belt. No. On va trouver un autre nom. On va trouver un autre nom, t'inquiète. Stanlerine, ça marche pas. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Um, alors, en version 1, j'ai déjà fait cette fin là et les deux fins qui sont là. On va voir si ça change quoi que ce soit. Je suis pas sûr. Hein. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Oh. 
Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. Oh, est-ce que ça va nous rebooter comme dans le 1 entre guillemets? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command! Freedom was mere moments away! And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Normalement, ça reboot. La Vienne, 19 h Vienne. Apparemment, on peut toujours revenir là. Ok, donc j'ai l'impression qu'on est reparti. Je peux me tromper, probablement même. Mais j'ai l'impression que. Est... On est de retour dans le vent avec la découverte. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Mais moi je voudrais l'accéder à l'ascenseur dans... Maybe Stanley would never pick up the bucket. A lonely bucket, oh, lonely and miserable and Stanley-less. Such a sad fate for a bucket. Ah, je vais le prendre ton seau. Il est où ton seau Voilà, ok, pourquoi les affiches étaient 427 ouais, J'avais joué au jeu et je le savais pas. Donc c'était pas la bonne affiche. <rire> Figure in Finders Committee today. Ah oui, c'est vrai que j'en ai trois maintenant. 
Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Attends, mais c'est ici qu'il m'a dit, euh, ouais, il a pas pris le saut, mais il était donc avant Ah, bah là, non. Non. Il est où Ah, bah je suis con. Stanley picked up the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Comment est-ce qu'elle flotte dans l'air Ça, je, je suis d'accord. C'est une bonne question. Ah, chambre rouge, fond d'interrogation Je ne sais pas où est la chambre rouge. En même est-ce que j'ai envie de collectionner euh, Non. Thank you, good luck. Oh, Stanley. Can you feel it The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy? It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be, given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh no, we're getting into name calling now it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait, now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends that your relationship is purely superficial and convenient? That your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, I never... Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. Alors, um, très intéressant ce petit suisse qui ne sert absolument à rien vu qu'il essaie de me convaincre. De... Okay, I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Je Here veux poser le saut là. Property of Stanley. Now it's settled. No more debate, no more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Voilà. Ça, je l'ai pas encore fait. Euh, attends, attends, attends. Ah non, j'ai déjà pris... Euh... Je, 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 comme, réflexe, je commence à chercher les figurines. Je suis pas sûr que ce soit un excellent réflexe.
Ah mais moi j'adore la bossa nova, hein, je m'en fous, c'est pas un problème. Comme quoi l'idée du, du trou sans fond, euh, c'était pas une idée originale pour le 2, hein. elle existait euh, dans le 1. Heureusement qu'on a d'autres sauts de soutien émotionnel. Hein. T'imagines quelqu'un de claustrophobe qui joue à ce jeu et qui se retrouve là-dedans Genre en VR Combien de temps qu'on est là 3-4 minutes Je peux toujours essayer d'appuyer sur les boutons, hein, c'est les seuls trucs interactifs là. Mais... Eh ben on a bien rigolé Et on est revenu au point de départ. <rire> Il est excellent cet ascenseur LOL ah, C'est le meilleur ascenseur que j'ai jamais vu dans un jeu vidéo. C'est tu rentres, tu fais un peu de bossa nova, tu ressors. Alors, rien que pour cet ascenseur, le jeu vaut le coup. Je suis désolé, mais euh, à 200%. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him, always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Hmm. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. une option qu'on n'a pas exploré est-ce que le fait d'avoir le saut pourrait changer une fin ah on va par là although this passageway had the word escape written on it the truth was that at the end of this hall Stanley and the bucket would both meet a violent death The door behind them was not shut. 
Stanley and the bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley and the bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end, as it was crushed violently to death. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one stood above the rest. It was a glorious bucket to behold. Le Sceau vous accueille la grande exposition. Vous vous tenez au bord du savoir. Tout comme un Sceau, l'esprit humain est souvent vide à l'intérieur avec les dernières. Ah, les connaissances du saut et son histoire sans. Ah, Changerez-vous votre vie et la vidéo prochaine à cette exposition Ou fermerez-vous les yeux pour continuer à vivre comme avant en ignorance de l'obscurité Alors, moi je dis, on ne dit pas aux autres qu'ils sont dans l'ignorance et l'obscurité lorsqu'on ne met pas de point d'interrogation à la fin d'une question. Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? Photographie de 25 sauts, le plus grand nombre de sauts pris en photo à ce jour. Le photographe a souffert d'une catatonie de plusieurs semaines causée par l'euphorie de l'exposition à tant de sauts à la fois. Ah, je veux bien croire, c'est vrai que c'est excitant. Saut infernal. Putain, mais ils partent complètement sucette dans leur texte. Une reproduction du saut infernal qui, au Moyen-Âge, avait un attrait si intense que des dizaines de pays s'affrontèrent pour en obtenir le contrôle. Il y eut des milliards de morts, et malgré tout, ce simple fait demeure, personne ne peut contrôler un saut. Nous savons que les sauts précèdent l'existence de l'humanité. <rire> Lol Les sauts précèdent l'existence de l'humanité. Ok, très bien, commençons comme ça. Nous ne savons pas depuis combien de temps. Euh, ce dessin d'une grotte illustre la découverte humaine précoce des commodités du saut. A cette époque, le saut existait déjà depuis plusieurs millénaires. Observez dans ce dessin comme le saut se laisse utiliser, ayant jugé les êtres humains comme étant dignes de ces trésors. Très gentil de sa part. Quelle noblesse de la part de ce saut No man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket.
Le saut accroché. Cette œuvre symbolise la relation nécessaire entre le saut et l'humanité. Quel que soit ce que nous comprenons sur le saut, il y en a toujours plus de connaissances qui restent inaccessibles. Sa distance est forcément pour notre bien. Oui, moi aussi j'ai envie de sauter. Hein. Oh, on peut pas. On peut approcher le saut du coup. But there is something we can do. Something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Let Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. Eh bien, chers amis, nous voici revenus littéralement au point de départ. Et c'était une découverte très intéressante. Ça, c'est original. C'est pas tous les jours euh, qu'on voit des, euh, des expositions sur l'histoire des sauts. Voilà. C'est pas tous les jours qu'on prend un ascenseur euh, qui ne change pas d'étage et se contente de jouer de la bossa nova. Hein. Euh, ce n'est pas tous les jours qu'on a un bouton sur lequel on peut appuyer qui fait avancer le temps de, à chaque fois euh, en années, puis en dizaines d'années, puis en, en millénaires, etc. Euh, non, c'est pas tous les jours que, que le narrateur oublie son texte. C'est pas tous les jours qu'on trouve six figurines sans qu'il y ait de récompense au bout. Ah, c'était assez original. Il euh, y a sans doute encore des chemins que j'ai pas explorés que je regarderai. Mais en attendant, nous on va s'arrêter là. Et du coup, je vous dis merci d'être passé. Et donc, bah, à la prochaine fois. Tchuss!